bringing to you today? Today, I'm bringing to you my greatest hits, but not just any of them. I'm bringing to you my fall, harvest, and autumn greatest DIY hits ever. These are DIYs that are budget friendly, that have an amazing outcome. Some of them look so high end that you wouldn't even know you were using Dollar Tree items to create them. I can't wait to show you my fall and harvest greatest hits DIYs. So I'm gonna quit my Gavin, let's jump into it, and let's take a look at some of these great DIYs that you're not gonna wanna miss. using one of these here plaques. You can get these plaques in just about any season, so fear not if you can't find this one. I did remove the embellishment, you saw that, but I'm not throwing it away because it says welcome, and that could be used in another DIY, so why throw it away? I'm gonna frame this plaque out with some of Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks, and you can see that I'm using the back side of this plaque because why would we use the front side, the decorative side, and worry about having to cover up all that decorative stuff when we can use the back side? And guess what it is? It's a blank canvas. I like to frame out these plaques with Jenga blocks because I feel like it frames out the plaque and it gives it a more finished look, a more high-end look. And so something other than just a DIY craft. The brown I'm using today is this brown by Hello Hobby. This is a chalk paint. This is the paint that took the place of the Waverly chalk paint. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give this plaque a good base coat of that, a good couple base coats. You know what, I need to clarify, after I put the initial coat on this plaque, when I went in for the second coat, I did keep it wet because I'm gonna do that thing that I always like to do by adding another color paint to it. And I do that while the paint is wet because you can get that clouded look that I so like and it actually makes it a bit easier to sand down and smooth out so you don't get such harsh lines. Those harsh lines you get when you add a second color to the top of a dried paint already. Oops. Once it's dried, I am gonna go in with a light grade sandpaper and just soften up some of the harsh lines that didn't blend into the brown. I feel like just adding this touch of orange to the brown just kind of adds to that fall and harvest feel. For this next part of the DIY, I will be using the maple leaves that I showed you that I'd be using. Now with these, you know that I don't like the hole in them, so using some of Dollar Tree spackling, we are gonna fill those holes in. I wish that they just wouldn't even have holes in them, but I guess because they're ornaments, they need them so you can hang them. I wanna know, does anybody really use these as ornaments or do you repurpose them? Because I repurpose them all the time, with the exception of the Christmas ones, I guess. The paint colors that I'll be using for these leaves is Hello Hobby's Desert Tan, Light Mint, and Pumpkin Orange. Look at that, I've got all Hello Hobby. Never thought I'd see that. Still love Waverly though. I'm gonna color two, color or paint? I'm gonna paint, not color. <laughs> I'm gonna paint two leaves in each color. On each of the leaves, I wanted to add some stitching because I just love it. It was either stitching or distressing, and truth be told, I did distress one, and I wasn't completely happy with it. I wasn't feeling it. I'm feeling the stitching, so that's what I'm gonna do to each of the leaves, which is, how many leaves is that? Six, because we did two of each color. I bet I don't even have to tell you these leaves are going inside the plaque that we framed with the Jenga blocks, and I thought it'd be fun just to kind of offset them, alternating the colors. I love these colors. Have I told you that? These are my new favorite fall and harvest colors that I have been incorporating into my decor this year, and I am mildly obsessed with it. Okay, more than mildly. Today, I'm gonna be using these brown cardstock letters that spell out the word autumn that I cut out using my Cricut. And to adhere them onto the leaves, I will be using some of this Loctite spray adhesive. When spraying the spray adhesive on your letters, you're gonna wanna make sure that those letters are face down so you're spraying it on the back side. I know, common sense, but I'm not gonna lie when I tell you that I have, in fact, sprayed the wrong side of my letters before. And so, yes, I'm gonna go ahead and add one letter to each leaf. I felt like these leaves were missing something. They were missing a raffia bow. That's what they were missing. You could probably even get away with using a twine bow on this DIY, but I am that of a creature of habit, and so harvest and fall screams 
Guess what? Yes, raffia, not twine. So I'm sticking with raffia. When you are fresh out of sawtooth hangers, when all else fails, you go with some twine. A few strands thick and a couple of knots on the end and you just pound it with some hot glue so it doesn't fall off the wall and you've got yourself a good hanger to hang your new fallen harvest wall decor piece that you just DIY using Dollar Tree items. It's great, this is so budget friendly and the outcome is amazing. Let's go take a look. Alrighty, so getting started for this first pumpkin, you're gonna need a few of these decorative nautical ropes from Dollar Tree. I think I picked up five to be exact. I went ahead and cut some cardboard, just made it whatever size I wanted it to be. I'm gonna say that this is probably six inches. And really, this is just to make it easier. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but I had an Amazon box just sitting on my floor staring at me, and I thought, heck, I'm just gonna use this. So I'm gonna use this to wrap my rope once I've got my rope wrapped, you're gonna to wanna to wrap it three, four, five times, however many times you can get it to. I would say not more than six. I'm gonna take some twine and I'm gonna tie it off in the middle. You're gonna need at least nine. If you wanna do more, you can. It really is dependent on how full you want your pumpkin to be. Then you're gonna take five of the nine, 10, 11, 12 bunches that you made and you're gonna tie them together here in the center. Then you'll have those two bunches that you tied together you're gonna tie those two bunches together. There is a method to my madness. If you try to tie all of your bunches together at once, it really just doesn't work. So you need to do it in two separate bunches. Wow, did I ever just make that complicated? Once I've got it tied off here in the middle, we want our pumpkin to have some sort of form, right? And so to do that, we need to make the center longer. So by tying twine around the top here and the bottom just like so it's going to give it a center a core which will allow this pumpkin to stand up and so again just by using the twine and tying those bunches together and you really do want to try and make them as tight as you can because the tighter the better and the more solid that core is going to be To these pumpkins because they need a stem. I'm gonna be using some of Dollar Tree's wood stems. I've been using these a lot lately. These are perfect for that. So just by hot gluing it to the top there, just like so, we've got a stem. This pumpkin needs a bow, so I'm gonna use some of this black and white gingham ribbon that you can get, guess where? Yes, at the Dollar Tree. And just tie a simple bow. This is gonna give it just a pop of color and it's gonna finish it off nicely. Look at that. How cool is this rope pumpkin? For this second quick and easy pumpkin, it's using one of my favorite things. Yes, can you guess what that is? Twine. And we're pretty much gonna do this pumpkin the same way, only I am using a smaller piece of cardboard because I don't want this pumpkin to be as large as the rope pumpkin. What's great about this one is you're only gonna need one spool of twine and it's gonna make several pumpkins. With this, you're gonna wanna wrap your twine several times because six strands clearly is not gonna be enough. You're gonna do it as many times as you want. I really didn't count, I just kinda did it. Again, I'm gonna tie off the center and I'm gonna make six of these bunches of twine. I'm gonna take half the bunches, which is three, and I'm gonna tie those three bunches together. Once I've tied both bunches of three together, guess what I'm gonna do? If I sound repetitive, that's because I am right now. This DIY is gonna be a lot of that. Once we've got all our bunches tied together, we're gonna to tie those two bunches together. Then we need to strengthen that core. And again, to do that, we're gonna tie two more pieces of twine near the top and the bottom of the center, which is going to, again, elongate that center so that way our pumpkin can stand up, it gives it some substance, and it's gonna give it some shape. Of course, this one's gonna get topped off with a wood stem for the pumpkin stem, yes. And I gotta finish it off with a black and white gingham bow to give it a pop of color. Okay, I love these, don't you? DIY pumpkin number three. Oh, this is a cute one, you're gonna love it. How about we make a pumpkin using, yes, this is pipe cleaner and some beads. Yes, these are pink beads, but I wanted a larger bead. 
These were the only ones Dollar Tree had available in my area, so I picked up four packs because they're the perfect size, and we can always paint these, right? Right. I'm gonna go ahead and string 22 beads on each piece of pipe cleaner, and you can see that I divided it up 11 on one side and 11 on the other, and I did do four here, but I feel like I did more than that. Using some of Waverly's hazelnut paint, I'm gonna go ahead and give all these pearls a nice good couple coats of this chalk paint. I love this color. Yes, I'm gonna take two pieces of pipe cleaner and I'm gonna connect the two ends just like you see me doing here. So on one side of the pipe cleaner, I'm gonna put 11 beads and on the other side, I'm gonna put 11 beads and I'm gonna leave about three quarters to an inch to an inch space there in the center. And it kind of works out perfect because that's where you kind of twisted the pipe cleaner together anyway. So yeah. Now we just gotta put this together, so we're gonna go ahead and stack it. And I'm gonna use hot glue to keep them in place because I feel like it just works better. It's gonna be less bulky than, I guess, twisting the pipe cleaner together. That's gonna bulk up the center and that wasn't something I wanted to do. I wanted it to lay as flat as I could get it. And so you can see here that by keeping that gap there in the second, it is allowing us to go ahead and do what we're doing, which now has given us eight sides to this pumpkin. So I'm just gonna take the sides, I'm gonna pull them up into the center, and I'm gonna go ahead and twist that pipe cleaner together. And when I do this, I'm gonna do it in a way that's gonna give us a stem as well. What's great about using pipe cleaner for this pumpkin is you can easily shape your pumpkin and it's gonna keep its shape. So that's a win-win, right? And of course, with this one, although I did use twine for a pumpkin, I am going to finish this one off with a raffia bow. For pumpkin number four, guess what I'm using to make this pumpkin? I've got green raffia in my stash. It's the only raffia that I have left in my stash. If I had orange, I would have used it, but I don't have it, so green's gonna have to work. Raffia can be a bit unruly to work with, right? For those of us who have tried to work with it, it kind of keeps its shape that it was packaged in, which makes it hard to work with. I mean, it's all bent, it's folded, it's not easy to straighten out, right? Oh, but it so is. If you submerge your raffia in water, it's gonna straighten out your raffia. Then just wring it out, hang it up to dry for a couple of hours and look at how perfect this raffia looks now. In turn, making it easy to work with, then you will all love raffia as much as I do because now it's not unruly. We're just gonna zoom right through this part because this is gonna be put together the same way that we did the twine, only we're using raffia, yes. I'm gonna say that the amount of bunches that you use for your pumpkins really is dependent on you and how full you want your pumpkin to be. So the more bunches you use, the fuller your pumpkin's gonna be. I was sticking between, I wanna say six and 10, and because raffia was a bit thicker than twine, I think I went with six. Yeah, I'll say six. I'm gonna say it. I think I like the raffia pumpkin just as much as I like the twine ones. Fifth and final pumpkin. Oh my goodness, guess what I am using? Some of Dollar Tree's burlap wired ribbon. And I'm going with the traditional orange. Yes, you can do a decorative wired ribbon if you want, but you know me, I love burlap. This is a rustic colored orange, so this is what I'm gonna use. This pumpkin is going to be a bit different than the twine, raffia, and rope one, but very similar to that of the beaded pumpkin. I went ahead and cut five strips that were 24 inches long, which is two feet long. I'm gonna fold my strips in half and twist them because we're gonna kind of stack them, I guess, the same way that we did the beaded pumpkin. And so by twisting the center, it's kind of pinching it together. It's not gonna be as bulky in there. And so, yeah. So once I've got all my pieces stacked and twisted, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue these just like I did with the beaded pumpkin. 
Yeah, almost forgot what I was gonna say there. Now with this pumpkin, the top is gonna be put together just a bit differently because we can't really pinch it together and tie it off unless we use more ribbon. And I really wanted to stick with just one spool of the wired ribbon for this. And the, I was successful in doing that. So I'm just gonna pull the strips up and I'm gonna hot glue them together, forming the pumpkin as I go around. And for the top of this pumpkin, I'm going to use some of the burlap leaves that you can find at Dollar Tree. I thought that these were fun. It's a perfect way to cover up that hole on the top there. And it's going to give it a bit of a different look from the other pumpkins that we've done. And so I'm just going to put two on each side. And then I saw this lighter tan one as well that I liked. And so, yes, what a fun pumpkin, right? A burlap pumpkin with burlap leaves. Okay, I'm really corny, but I can't help it. And this pumpkin too shall be finished off with none other than a raffia bow. I love that this pumpkin, I guess, kind of is on the flatter side. You've seen those pumpkins in the store. They're cool looking. It gives it character. It gives it personality. If you want your pumpkin to stand up, put a toilet paper roll in the center and it'll stand up. Okay, for this DIY, you're gonna need three of these chalkboard looking pumpkins. I'm gonna disassemble this by taking off all of the embellishments taken off the raffia bow. Don't pull off the wire leaf because I've already ruined one pumpkin by trying to just kind of pull it out. I used wire cutters to cut it off. Once I got it cut off, there is a bit of excess wire left on the leaf itself. So you're gonna to wanna to cut that off too while you have your wire cutters out. I'm gonna set this leaf and the raffia bow aside for later because we are going to incorporate these back into this DIY when we're done. Now using a Sharpie marker, I'm gonna place dots on my pumpkin, two on the bottom, two on the top, and I'm gonna do this on both sides. I'm gonna use the existing hole that's already here from the twine, so I'm not making an additional hole. And you can see just where I'm putting it, about a half an inch in from the edge of the pumpkin itself. And I'm gonna do this to all three of the pumpkins. For this next step, I'll be using this Black & Decker handheld drill that I picked up at Walmart for $19.99. It's got a spot here where you plug it in and it charges the battery. I'll also be using this larger size drill bit to drill the holes into these pumpkins. If you don't want a drill or you don't have a drill, I will be showing you an alternative to this, so just stick with me. I'm gonna drill holes in all of the dots that I made, which is eight dots on each pumpkin, and I'm gonna do that to all three of the pumpkins. I honestly find that I get a lot of use out of having this handheld drill. It's easy to use. For $19.99, I feel like it has not let me down, and it's just one of those things that is kind of a good tool to add to your crafting supplies because it kind of opens up more opportunities when DIYing. Once I've got my holes drilled, I am gonna take a piece of sandpaper and smooth out the edges around the holes that I drilled. Then using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ivory, I am using a matte finish for this. I'm gonna give these three pumpkins a nice good coat of this. It did take a total of three coats to get it good and covered. Now taking some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. This is a stain that you can get at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's. I'm gonna be using this ink to distress the pumpkins, so I put just a bit of water into the lid because this is gonna help me to distress. This is just a bit of a different technique. Using a paintbrush, I'm gonna put just a tad of water on the paintbrush, dip it into the ink pad, and I'm just gonna kinda swirl this. Now, it may not look smooth, it may not look blended, but don't worry about that. What I want to convey to you is that there really isn't an art to this. It doesn't take talent to do this. There are ways that you can do this and get the same outcome, and that's what I'm gonna show you today. I like to use ink. If you wanna use a paint, you could use a paint. I just really like that soft, clouded look that you get when using ink and water, and so that's why I'm using this technique. I'm gonna put this ink around the whole outer edge of this pumpkin, and I'm also gonna put just a couple of lines down the center, kind of at an angle going down, and this is just gonna give this pumpkin a bit of dimension. Again, like I said, don't worry about perfection. Don't worry about the lines not looking realistic because once this is dry, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is 
to make this look distressed and to take away some of these harsh lines. I'm also going to take just a bit of the ink and I'm going to kind of just dry brush through the brighter areas of this pumpkin just to kind of give them that distressed dirty look as well. And if you want to darken up the outside, you can easily darken it up by just doing a second coat of the ink. You'll see that the ink with the water, it kind of changes the color. And this really was the color that I was going for. I didn't want such a harsh, dark brown. And so I'm happy with the color that I've got. And again, just by adding water to any of the ink and then distressing something that's painted, you're going to get a bit of a different color. So you might want to try it on something before you actually do it on your DIY to see what color you're actually going to get. So if you're left with something that looks like this, don't be alarmed because it's going to look amazing with just a bit of sandpaper. I've got two different grades of sandpaper. I've got this rougher grade and I've got a softer grade. I'm going to start off with the rougher and I'm just really going to go along the edges of the ink. I want to soften up those edges. I don't want such hard straight lines and just by sanding those edges, you're going to really make it look distressed. You're going to make it look like the paint was chipped away and the outside edges that we really kind of scuffed up and dented up where the wood would be exposed like right here. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this Waverly antique wax paint. If you have a dark brown paint that you want to use by Apple Barrel or Folk Art, you can do that. This is just what I have on hand. I really like this paint. And so I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and where this cardboard looking color is, I'm just gonna lightly add some of this darker brown antique paint to this. And I think that this is really gonna, again, give this more dimension. It's gonna make it look more distressed, more rustic, and it's gonna give it more of that aged look. This pumpkin is looking amazing. Everything is dry. All that's left to do is embellish this and put this piece together. I'm gonna take the aluminum leaf. Nothing else needs to be done to this. I think the green is gonna add a touch of color that this DIY needs. I'm gonna hot glue that back on. I'm also going to take my aluminum welcome sign. That's gonna go right in the middle and that can be held on with hot glue or any tacky glue of your choice. I'm gonna give this a coating of paint with the antique paint since I have it out. There really is no reason to throw a bow like this away. An embellishment like this away can be reused. All you have to do with raffia is wet it and it is so easy to manage and work with. And just like that, we gave this bow a new look and it's gonna go back where it once was. This pumpkin is done, looks stinking amazing, two more to go. The only difference that I'm going to be doing on these other two pumpkins is just switching up the words. I did use a complete three pack of Dollar Tree's Fall and Harvest aluminum words. I think that they just work perfect with this and for this last step of this DIY I will be using one of Dollar Tree's 13 foot decorative nautical ropes. I'm going to weave each of the ends through the holes of the pumpkin. The alternative to drilling the holes in the pumpkin so you can weave the rope in would be to actually just hot glue pieces of rope in the same areas where I drilled the holes and this is going to give you the illusion that the rope is woven through the pumpkin. So with the last two pumpkins I'm going to just continue to weave the rope through each of the holes and once I reach the bottom I'm just going to hot glue the ends of the rope to the back of the bottom pumpkin. I guess you can say that this is my recreation, but I'm gonna say that it more inspired me to do this piece. I really am happy with the outcome of this. I think that this was a fun piece to do, and I really like pieces like this when you transform something like this that you get from the Dollar Tree, and you turn it from something Dollar Tree bleak into something farmhouse chic. Alrighty, so getting started. Yep, you're gonna need two of these foam orange pumpkins. We're going to start off by removing the stem, but don't go throwing it away just yet because you may need it. Now with these pumpkins, I want to cut them in half and to cut them in half, yep, I went right into the kitchen and I'm going to use a bread knife. Yeah, that's what that is, a bread knife. 
And I'm gonna use the seam here as a guide. Why not use it? We don't want the seam to show in our DIY anyway. And for this DIY, we're gonna need four half pumpkins. That's why we needed two whole pumpkins. Today, I will be using some of Hello Hobbies pumpkin orange. I feel like this is the perfect orange. Nothing needs to be done to it because it's muted, it's rustic, and yeah, we need it to cover up that bright neon orange. I'm gonna paint all four of my pumpkin halves with, yes, Hello Hobbies pumpkin orange. And this here is a fabric yard. This is Buffalo Check. Yes, it is, and it is by Create It. This is one that you can get at Walmart for about $6. I used it in my last DIY. Guess what? We're using it in today's DIY. I'm gonna be using one of these plaques from, guess where, Dollar Tree. You're gonna wanna remove this welcome embellishment, but do not throw it away. No, no, no. We like to save this stuff because we might use it. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and on the blank canvas side of this plaque, which is the back side, because why would we use the other side? We want to a blank canvas. I'm gonna give this a nice good coating of some Mod Podge because guess what we're gonna do? Yes, I'm going to put the Buffalo Check fabric right on top of this covering the plaque because I love this. Why would we paint Buffalo Check on when we can use fabric or scrapbooking paper? I find that fabric is a bit easier to use when covering a plaque because you don't get the wrinkles and the bubbles as much. So I say go with fabric. Just buy a yard of it and use it all season because I'll probably be using this fabric at Christmas time too. Once I got the fabric on, I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat of Mod Podge and this is really just gonna help adhere it onto the plaque. Using a fresh new blade and the plaque as a guide, if you just run that blade right along the plaque there, you're gonna get a perfect nice clean cut and you're gonna remove that excess fabric. Guess what I am using to distress with today? Yes, yeah, some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. I find the easiest way to distress when using this ink is to use a stiffer paintbrush. And the way to get a stiffer paintbrush is if you just take an older brush that you're not too fond of, cut the bristles down pretty low, there you have got a stiffer brush and now you have got a brush that is perfect for applying this stain so we can distress our DIYs. That is the end goal there. Now don't go cleaning your brushes or putting your Distress Ink away yet because we've got four more pumpkins that we've got to add some distressing to. When doing these pumpkins, it's not so much about distressing them, although it kind of is, it's more about adding dimension. So these pumpkins have indentations on them because pumpkins have indentations, right? I really don't know what they're called. What is it called on a pumpkin? It's just the shape of a pumpkin, right? And so instead of just leaving it plain and orange, if you add some ink to those lines, you're adding dimension and you're actually giving it some depth. And what else are we giving it? Yes, some character and personality. Seriously, look at these pumpkins. Just adding those lines makes all the difference in the world. Now, I didn't show you placing all four pumpkins down on this plaque, but that is in fact what I did and I like to space them out before I actually glue them down so I know just where I wanna put them. For the stems of my pumpkin, yes, I am using these white birch stems that Dollar Tree has. They've got a bag of them, which is amazing. So when you see those, I've told you in the past, you gotta pick them up and put them in your stash because they are amazing. If your Dollar Tree stinks and you don't have these, then you're gonna wanna paint the stems that we removed that came with these pumpkins originally, you're gonna need to cut them in half, so that way you have four, and then you're just gonna put the half on top. And yes, we are going to use the embellishment that was once on this plaque, and we're gonna replace it at the top. So when you do place your pumpkins, you're gonna to wanna to leave enough space at the top so you can place back on this embellishment. I didn't feel like anything else needed to be done with this. I felt like it was the perfect color, the wording was there, so why not reuse it? And of course, each of these pumpkins is going to get topped off with not a twine bow, but come on, say it with me, everybody, a raffia bow because it is fall and harvest, and fall and harvest screams what? Raffia, yes. I'm gonna hot glue these letters on the front of each of the pumpkins, spelling out the word fall, I chose brown because I'm an earth tones person. I'm a creature of habit, have I said that? Let's go see what pictures I took. Can I just say I love this piece? I do. It was quick, easy, budget friendly, and the outcome of this is amazing. 
How easy was this to make? So I say go out, get yourself some pumpkins, get yourself a plaque, and make this DIY today. And hang it up in your house every year. I'm gonna be honest, I don't much like this foam stem, so it's coming off. It's held in with a toothpick of all things. I thought it would have been glued on. And to this bright orange pumpkin, I'm gonna give it a nice good coat with some of Hello Hobbies pumpkin orange. Yes, I'm painting this orange pumpkin orange. Why not? Because we can. Because this is a rustic orange. This is a farmhouse orange. It's muted. Muted is my middle name. So I'm gonna give this a good couple coats. It's gonna take a couple because that orange is so bright. We need to cover it up. We gotta mute it down. Did I say that? And did I tell you, I'm doing more than one of these. I can't wait to show you this set of four. Yes, four pumpkins. You're gonna love these. Make sure you pick up four of these pumpkins. You know I'm gonna distress these pumpkins and to do that, I'm gonna use my favorite method, which is using some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of, yes, Walnut Stain. You can get this Distress Ink at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, even Amazon. It comes in several different shades. For the stem of my pumpkin, I'm gonna be going with these white birch wood stems and where there would be a twine bow. Oh no, it's fall and harvest. We're gonna finish this pumpkin off with a raffia bow. These are such a fun new addition to the fall and harvest line. These wood words, actually wood sayings. You're getting six of them in a pack. We've got this welcome fall. We've got blessed, love that. How about we give some thanks? Yes, good advice to people. Farm fresh. Hello Fall and Hello Autumn. These are great for even using year round because we've got the blessed and the farm fresh, give thanks. I think they're fun. They're definitely something that can be incorporated into a farmhouse DIY, maybe. Yes, so for this one, I'm gonna go with the give thanks. Well, maybe not, I guess not. Oh wait, we're going back to the give thanks. Yes, that's the one I'm gonna go with for this pumpkin. And guess where I'm gonna put it? Yeah, right on the front of this pumpkin. Look at how rustic that looks. Let us not forget, I said I was doing four pumpkins because the color scheme I'm going with this year is amazing. I think I'm mildly obsessed with it. That teal, orange, creams, browns, I am loving it. I, I, I'm feeling like I might be tempted to get rid of my traditional colors and really just go all in with this color scheme because I'm loving it so much. And so with three of the pumpkins, I did in fact do one teal. I know I really don't have to go over this with you, but yes, all the pumpkins are in fact going to get one of these wood stumps. These are awesome. I am telling you, when you find them at Dollar Tree, you need to stock up on a couple bags because they're great for all year round. Have I said that? So many of the things that come out this time of year are great for farmhouse. And of course, another raffia bow. Now with this, I felt like it was just a bit too light, the wood, and so I'm taking the lazy way out of doing this and I just thought I'd rub the front side of this along my ink pad and darken it up a bit. Oh, I love the look of that wood. And so for the last painted pumpkin, I did the same thing and used the Tim Holtz Distress Ink on this one as well. We've got one more pumpkin to go. With this one, I'm not only gonna paint it, I am going to cover it, but because it is a neon orange and I don't want it to show through, guess what I'm gonna cover it with? Yes, some fabric. I figured I'd give it a quick coat with some ivory paint just to kinda mute out that orange just a bit, tone it down so it doesn't show through the fabric. Covering a pumpkin with fabric, I found the easiest way to do this is to cut your fabric into strips. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that a two inch wide strip is kind of a universal width to use. I feel like that works the best. Why does that work the best? Because when you're going over some of those creases or the bumps on a pumpkin, you're gonna get ripples in your fabric. And if your fabric is too wide, your ripples are going to be worse. And so I found that doing a two inch wide strip was the best. Ask me the length of these, I couldn't tell ya. Just measure the top of your pumpkin to the bottom and that's the size you're gonna need. Consistency, yes, I am staying consistent with the theme of using these white birch wood stumps. Did you all know these stumps are white birch? That is awesome, I love white birch trees by the way. Fun fact of the day. 
can't forget the raffia bow. Of course not. That would be like forgetting twine on a DIY. Oh wait, I have done that lately, haven't I? Oops. And I thought the best word for this farmhouse buffalo check pumpkin would be the word blessed. I love these wood cutouts. enjoyed my DIY fall and harvest greatest hits. I still to this day have all of these DIYs because they were hands down my favorite DIYs, my favorite fall and harvest DIYs. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive please, because I am. Bye for now everybody.